Hello, 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 hello. So today we're going to be doing something new because I need to start transferring to other sort of off to a great start here with remembering what words are um, other content for when I leave for college because the dull stuff will be a lot harder to do then so I probably won't be doing that while I'm in the dorms. So I have air dry clay. And I don't know what I'm making, but I have air dry clay and a lot of tools. And I vaguely know how to work with it. Boop. One thing I hate about these air dry clay packages is that they are not resealable. So either you have to use it all at once or you have to just put it in a Ziploc bag and hope it doesn't dry out. It's, you could have made it resealable. That doesn't seem that hard. All right. I don't know what I'm doing, but I sure am doing something here. Uh, lighting. There we go. have a container of water to help smooth things down. So that's the nice thing about air dry clay is that you can rehydrate it if it starts to dry out or crack. have some old tools from my mom who used to work with clay still does sometimes but she usually works with um oven bake clay and i am working with and probably will continue to with air dry honestly just because it's much easier to blend sort of integrate into other projects and it blends well with other media and I guess systems because it doesn't have to go in the oven it can just dry the only thing is that it's not a uh, waterproof when it's dried because water will put it back into being putty since it's basically made of paper. But that also means that it's decently lightweight as much as a clay can be. So that's pretty good. Okay, what am I doing? I don't know yet. I almost want to create just a little creature, but I... Eh. <laughs> some other stuff planned for things to do on stream and in YouTube videos and all that in future. And once again, here's the dichotomy of I really want to talk about my projects because I'm excited, but I also don't know how much of it I should keep under wraps for drama and building hype and all that. But I've gotten back into doing some writing. So I was thinking maybe I would do like audiobook style read alouds of some of my stories once I get, you know, more progress done on the ones that I've written recently so they aren't, you know. My writing has gotten better over the years, but I was very much at a when I wrote most of my stuff middle school writing style and all that, so.
probably have gone into this with like concept art. <laughs> some I have some idea of what I'm working on here. But we will figure this out together. Besides, I have like a full hour here. Like more closer to an hour and a half, really. <laughs> I did kind of intend for today's stream to be longer, but some stuff happened that kind of got in the way of that. I realize that that sounds slightly ominous, and by it stuff happened, I mean food took longer to arrive than expected, and I wasn't going to do this without having dinner first, so. Okay, I have a vague plan now. As much as I ever plan out anything, which is rarely. <laughs> the majority of my content is made with very little plan. Which works out okay on stream, I've found. But yeah, today I wrote a whole two pages. <laughs> of a very fun scene to write because it's a full-on, like, fight scene. Except... The two characters who it's sort of from the point of view of, or rather the one character is from the point of view of and friend of that character, don't know how to fight. So it's just complete chaos in that we are trying to make this mission work out, but neither of us actually know what we're doing here. So one of the uh, sort of bad guys in the scene is taken down because one of the characters just straight up bites. Just I am on the ground. You are standing over me. I am going to bite your ankle. <laughs> and it works because no one expects that. It does make sense for the character, though, so. Move this down, but I think the best idea is just going to be with my finger and very carefully. Eh. Tools are a mess over here. Okay. That seems like the right one, so I will get it slightly damp, because that does help with working with air-dry clay with tools. If I do do sort of this audiobook style recordings I was thinking about, I don't know if those should be done live or in recording. Or both, I guess? Because there is a section on Twitch for read aloud. 
which I didn't know until I started streaming and I noticed that. So that's kind of cool. been doing all of the writing and the editing and all of that myself and I don't know if any of these stories are actually going to turn into anything beyond just here's a draft but you know might as well get it out there right actually it probably won't beyond being here's a story I'm telling on various social media, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, this probably comes across a lot in my streams and how many different things I do on my streams. But I, as a person, I'm like often just completely chronically bored and I hate that. <laughs> so I will find a way to entertain myself. And usually that means making a lot of things of different kinds because that's fun. Once again, I have a vague plan of what I'm doing here. I don't know how this is going to actually work out. Yes, these clay streams should become more common in future, along with the digital art streams. But the problem with doing digital art streams is that those can and will destroy my wrists for the rest of the week. Because I'm just doing art for two hours straight with some breaks, but honestly probably not as many as I should be taking. I should be, but I haven't been, so. Mm. Usually when I'm working with air dry clay, my tools will always have some water on them. You can kind of see the shine there. My plan for this guy is sort of like almost fire spirit, but in a just undeniably sluggy way, which I think will be cute. <laughs> that means I can 
and start putting some little texture pieces in. I have done fire effects in clay before, and I have proven that that is something that I can do fairly well. It's usually just a lot of these little things rolled out. push together to make sort of that texture. I don't know. We might drift a little bit into sort of the uh existential sort of talk here. That's sort of where my head's at, but not in a horribly bad way. It's just, yeah. Sometimes when I'm doing these things, I'm thinking about why I'm doing these things. And it's a little difficult to come up with an answer often. Oftentimes, rather. That phrase was incorrect, but I hope you get what I mean. sort of a little bit weird to be making things and doing things that aren't really practical for anything. And it's sort of, why am I even doing this? But I'm doing this because I want to. And that sort of gives a lot more power to I guess, art as a whole, because it's one thing that you almost always do because you want to. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are people, actually, yes, I am sure, because I have encountered people who do art for their job and who don't really consider it as much a sort of free time thing as a, this is what I do for work. <laughs> But there's still that element of, you started doing this because you loved it. Because that's the only way to get good at this, is if you're doing it often enough, and that's because you love it. And I kind of like that idea. And sort of the driving force behind art and all of that is just love of everything, of the universe. That sort of connects to why I'm filming it and putting it up on the internet is this is an art of love and I hope somebody else can get something out of it beyond just me making things for the love of it is I love this world and I would like to put something into it that might make some form of difference to someone in addition to I love doing this so it's sort of yeah Kind of an interesting thought process there.
Also something I've kind of noticed, sort of going completely off the rails from the previous topic of conversation, because that's how my brain works, is when I'm filming in different times of the year, you can tell based on my lighting, because when it's like summer and there's light at the time when I'm filming, I like to have window open, which is right there. I realize I kind of just pointed at you, but it's sort of behind the camera. Which gives good light and all that. And I like to have that open whenever it's an option. But in the wintertime, it's not really because the um, sun goes down earlier before or in the middle of my stream. So sort of if you watch my stream recordings, you can tell where that shift is because the lighting will shift to artificial lighting instead of natural sunlight. You can also kind of tell throughout the course of the stream, I'm sure, if you sped it up. You can see the, the lighting getting dimmer as the sun goes down to the window. Which is why I don't have a solid lighting rig, because I like having natural light, and that means that I can't get consistent lighting ever. And I will probably never be able to. <laughs> so I put my desk directly in front of a window. So that no matter what I'm working on, I can always have natural sunlight. And also, I can look at nature while I'm working. And while I'm answering emails, which I hate doing. Sort of, I'm doing this thing which I greatly dislike, but hey, animals, out's window. That's kind of fun. Emails are difficult. I have four email addresses, and that's insane. I have too many emails. I have to check all of them, like, every day, though, because they're all updating on other important things. <laughs> and the updates I get from the college go to two separate email addresses, and there's almost no way to predict which one it's going to go to. So I always have to check both of those emails. Because <laughs> are they going to email me through my on-site, integrated with the campus system school email, or are they going to email me through the email that I signed up to the school through, which is the one they have on file as what my third party email is. So, uh. Also, emails are just like typically weirdly formal and I don't like it. Same thing with, honestly, just regular letters. It's a problem. Okay. This should work. I'm carving out the end. Trying to get good lighting to. I'm very happy with the little arms. I think it's adorable. <laughs> I'm just kind of adding material and sculpting down through the previously added material to sort of make those little, little troughs through it to create the sort of look of fire. And wetter clay, for science reasons, sticks better than dry clay. So if you want your clay piece to really stick down, you should get it kind of damp. 
lay it down and let it dry into the other piece so it's sort of fused. Summer is a weird time for me, I have to say, especially right now because I, I'm going to go to college at the end of the summer. So that's weird, but summer is always kind of weird because I don't feel like I have anything going on because my list of daily tasks is very short, but I'm also constantly busy and have no free time. So it's like, I feel like I did nothing today, but no, I just did a thousand tiny things that really needed to get done. And none of them felt like a big enough task to put on a checklist and check off. So I, yeah, I've done nothing today. Except I've done a lot today. <laughs> it's just not, you know, on a class list. Kind of unfortunate that I've sort of trained myself like that so that I do well in school. It's sort of less, almost, not really, oh God, what are words? Um. Not really in terms of like measuring my worth by what I'm getting done, but in terms of I've really just trained myself to operate off of a preset list. And it's kind of weird for me to not be doing that. So I sort of have to create a list in my head so that I can keep track of everything. It's like when you're in school, everybody's giving you lists and expecting you to follow them. And when you're not in school, Everyone's expecting you to operate perfectly fine without a list. And I don't know what society expects of me. <laughs> because they're not making it explicitly clear and I cannot read between those lines. Also, I feel like important context for all of my streams, every time I do something on stream, I have to hold back the urge to say boop. Just boop, boop, boop. And a lot of the time I fail, so it, you'll hear me saying that in the background. Because it's a very satisfying thing to say when you finish something. Depending on the uh, size of the task. Because for the big task, you want to have a catchphrase for that. So you can feel cool. Even though that's the nerdiest thing you can possibly do. So it has come to my attention that a lot of the things I do that make me feel cool are actually, in fact, the nerdiest possible thing you could be doing at any given moment. Although I guess that sort of makes sense because your definition of cool is sort of shaped by the uh, media you consume. Kind of see the, the texturing there. 
<sighs> Stretching. And trying to get in the habit of doing that every half an hour or so into streams. Ugh. Why am I tired? Once again, I feel like I did nothing all day. Take a sippy of a beverage. Do a big stretch. Yeah, I have the weirdest memory problems. It's like I can remember random fact that I learned a long time ago that is no longer relevant to my life at all. If it ever was, usually not, because it's generally some animal fact that I've never actually encountered that animal. But I can remember all of that, but like sometimes I just straight up forget, like, what did I have for lunch today? <laughs> it, hmm. Yeah, sometimes I just actually can't remember stuff like that, and it's very weird. So I've sort of gotten in the habit of there's this thing I do whenever I arrive at a new destination, or whenever I leave a place, which is... I will do a count of all of the important objects I have on me. So it usually counts to three with phone, water bottle, backpack, and then like sometimes additional for keys and such. And I just do that every time I leave or arrive at a destination so I can figure out if the number has stayed the same all day, and if it hasn't, where things were lost. <laughs> Which is a good thing. It has saved me a couple times from losing things. But it's also just kind of odd that I've managed to train myself into doing that so foolproofly. Foolproofly? That doesn't sound like a word. I don't know if that's a word. Effectively? Consistently? Consistently sounds right. Also, I think somebody pointed this out to me at some point, but the term foolproof is just why is it called that? Usually when something's foolproof, you're not actually worried about someone foolish breaking through it. Or like, damaging it or whatever. You're usually worried about somebody who knows what they're doing doing that. So why is it still called foolproof? What fool are you trying to proof against? <laughs> That term just doesn't make any sense. I had a tool. I don't know where I put it. This isn't it, but this should work. 
I have so many clay tools. They're all in a pile. I have to go dig through it every time I need a tool, and it's very impractical. Do not recommend this as a storage solution. Okay, that's adorable. I got it. You got it with you too. He has little peeps. Focus on the peeps. He has little peeps. Peeps. Flash that back on. The camera has a built-in ring light, and it's nice. But I don't know enough about lighting to know how to properly operate it within any form of context. Ever. So I'll usually just fiddle with it until it does something kind of like what I want. It's not quite what I want. <sighs> Ugh. You think I'm so tiny? I realize I just did all of that off camera anyway. Which is good because I ended up removing the modification I made because I didn't like it. Okay, that seems good. And try to cement that on with water. I almost want to do something here, and I might ruin everything, or it might look really cute. So I'm gonna do it. And if this ruins everything, it is my hubris and my irresistible hunger to do it. impulse control when it comes to cute things or when it comes to like kind of creepy things I like things that are both creepy and cute usually only when they're nice though it's like the perfect combination I waited too long and now the stuff I'm trying to sculpt here is mostly dry.
That's not gonna work out in the way I want it to. Oh, hello. <sighs> Mr. Bot has returned. I think it's a different one, though. Um... How do I destroy you? <laughs> Please leave my stream. No, oh, wait, that's not right. You. There we go. Um... Goodbye, Mr. Mott. Thank you for dropping by, but no thank you. As of yet, I have not run into problems with being my channel's only moderator. That might have something to do with the fact that I'm a very small channel, though. Okay, I think this is gonna work. giving almost sort of a scaly pattern to him. And I kind of want it to look almost like a lava flow, which is going to be a lot in the paint job. Scaly bits. Sort of shape them.
That's sort of the thing with clay, is that you don't know what it's gonna look like when it's done. Like, you can kind of see it coming together, but it also will be painted. <laughs> so, I don't know what this is gonna be here. Or kind of what I want it to be, but... That might not work out, and even if it does, it might not work out in the way I was thinking it would. And that's always fun. Something you build works out, but differently. Additional lighting now that the sun's starting to go down more. That didn't work. to rehydrate the glob of clay I'm working off of. It's starting to dry out. <sighs> also need to stop hunching over my desk. Which might mean I need to adjust my, ter my chair. That's the word. Ugh. Believe it or not, I am a completely native English speaker. I just... I'm not good at it. <laughs>
I'm adding in sort of a little rock texture there to go with the flame texture on the back. And then I'm going to paint in between that like a lava flow. So it's the rocks sliding along on the lava flow. Sort of building up most of that on the little tummy. That feels right. So yes, it seems the answer to the question, what am I actually building today, is Little Slug Fire Monster, and I'm okay with that. That's a pretty good answer to that question. That sounds correct. Maybe I'll paint this little guy on stream at some point. Maybe just with acrylic. That might be fun. Creature. It's a decent amount of weight to it, this clay's. Pretty heavy. I love this creature. I'm just going to add a little more to my paint job. I need to wet the area. Otherwise, nothing will stick. It's completely dry. Once again, a question that I won't have the answer to until the end of the stream. But I have had one consistent viewer throughout this stream. Or rather, I've been consistently at one viewer throughout this entire stream. And I don't know if it's the same viewer. Since I don't tell you that until the final sort of readout for the stats of the stream. You've got sort of a little number in the corner of your screen about how many people are watching.
Blue. Lost one of the pieces I put on. It has been unlost, found, and reapplied. Moving some stuff down. Come on, focus. Very. Oh. And around the sort of face, you have that? is approaching you. A friend. There we go. I think that guy is just about done. So, since it's been an hour, which I realize means nothing, but you know, I think I'm going to end the stream there. So, thank you to everybody who watched live and to anybody who's stopped by on the recording. I will definitely stream again next week if I don't get to it later this week. As I said, I've been pretty busy. And my social medias are up on the screen now. I hope you have the rest of a good rest... Uh, God. Words. I hope you have a good rest of your evening or... If you're watching on recording, I guess, day. And I will see you guys next time.